Hello and welcome to the Neon Chronicles. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the 4.6 version update for Genshin Impact and reacting to some of the highlights, some of the things that made this patch extra special and a little bit more nuanced than they have been in the past. I hope it goes without saying, but this video is going to have quite a few spoilers. So if you have not done the story yet, if you don't really know much about Arlecchino, then you might want to click off this video and come back to it, but it will be right here for you in the future. So thank you for joining us. If this is your first time, please do leave a like, leave a comment, try to subscribe if you're interested. Uh, we love to do deep dives on creativity and what makes these characters, these experiences, and these games feel so special. So with all that being said, let's dive right into it. I'm really excited about this update because it is all about the duality of good and evil, what that really might mean depending on which perspective you're coming from and told through the lens of lost stories. What I love about this and what I love about what Hoyoverse does with these um, explorations of past motifs and archetypes is they always find a way to play with nostalgia and play with references. Arlecchino I think is one of the most complex characters that we've seen to date and I'm really excited to dive into the lore and the why. Right off the bat, we can tell that there's this contrast in the fairy tale, lighthearted format of the story and the way it's being told, and the message, the, the contents that are being shared, where these children were raised in the darkness, raised to kill each other to find the one true king. And from this setup, we can tell that these are primordial times, which means we have to go way back in time to understand the mythology of the Ouroboros and the creation of the old, the new, the harmony, the dissonance, and how it's this never-ending cycle that repeats. And in this latest update to the story, it's what makes Arlecchino so complex. She is that Loki energy that transitions one era into the next, decisively. Things can't stay the same forever, and the changing of the melody is what's required for life to evolve and dance a new dance. And it's in this endless tug of war where we get to decide if we want to face our demons or become them. Oh, rough start, huh? How about I dance the black swan for you? No one knows what the future holds, what tragedy or triumph may be in store. Being at the head of this organization requires the strength of will to face whatever comes. Caution will only hold you back. Strength may decide the ultimate victor, but those who let a lack of strength dictate their decisions or undermine their convictions will never be worthy of the throne. And this idea has been around for as long as, well, time itself. It's the way that bacteria evolved, it's the way that animals evolved, it's the way that we have evolved, and unfortunately so far it's the way that history has been told. The victors get to choose what they want to pass on, and in curating their values, their morality, their version of the truth, they create both wonders and catastrophes. And it doesn't mean that we should stop standing up for something. It just means that... First, you have to experience the full fall and the complete self-loathing in order to come around to something like the forgiving of oneself. It's when you skip responsibility, when you use a substitute emotion like guilt, which is of no use to anyone. No. But if you feel the real thing, which is shame, hatred, humiliation, and self-loathing. That is the door. And if you get through that, then you can forgive yourself. And the message, as usual, couldn't be more timely because we live in a world with so much potential that is ruined by people who just never had the chance to go through that door themselves. Complaining without action or controlling without mercy. Come with me. I will raise you as my child. Like a strict and unfeeling father. We can only interact with each other in one of two ways. We can trust people to make choices for themselves, or we can control those choices for them. Arlecchino clearly chooses the latter. 
and it's interesting to see how over generations we are becoming more and more trusting which leads me to the booba kiki effect <laughs> and not the kind of booba you're thinking about but this is a universal effect that was tested in different age groups different languages and different cultures to see if there's a connection between sounds and the way that we see the world and interestingly enough we did find some connections. Booba is the integration, the coming together, sometimes even the control. And Kiki is the expulsion, the wanting to be separate from the original idea. And this never ending push and pull, this tug of war of old and new, of sharp and soft, of dissonant and harmonious is something that transcends mediums. And what I love about Arlequino is she shows restraint right when she sees that the next generation is not yet ready to fight on their own. Still, not strong enough to beat me. <laughs> Children must grow up to surpass their parents. Only then can a family continue to flourish. And while it's easy for us to look at the past and see our aggressors as the villains they are, it's often hard to empathize with why they are the way they are. And Arlequino, I think, does that beautifully in a way well i should say hoyoverse did that beautifully through arlequino because they were able to tell that story in a way that made you understand why she made her decisions and on top of that she also had her own growth and redemption of recognizing that her children might have a better way that they might see the world differently and have a different version of what a family means that is also worth fighting for and protecting. We still have to determine how to be complete human beings, how to be responsible to something larger than ourselves, how to be parents, how to be workers, how to be philanthropists, how to take care of and nurture the other, and at the same time, how to be this very unique person. And Arlequino is certainly unique. You can't tell if she's fighting for the good guys, the bad guys, at the end of the day, she's really just fighting for what she believes in, which is if you have something you want, you fight for it decisively, unapologetically. And that is exactly what she has taught her children at the House of the Hearth. I hear that the children love to play by the fireplace. So let us continue to use the name House of the Hearth. Still, its flame is no longer needed. For you have the strength to defend yourselves. Let's talk about her character design next and how they convey some of these lore bits, some of her background, her motives, and in the lighting they use throughout all of her different appearances. So from that very first trailer, we see the transition of light to dark. From the House of the Hearth and its origins, we have the Tore working with the children. It's clearly that transition into the dark night of the soul. But then, when she has her moment of redemption, that moment of restraint with the Traveler and the children, they go from dark to light. And you know, the movement of things is quite intentional when it comes to cinematography. And you see how they even do that again at the very end of the trailer. Now that the children can defend themselves, we see her face go from light right back to dark. Could that mean that she will regress? That she will eventually side with the bad guys and end up on their side? It's hard to say for sure, and we'll definitely have to wait to find out. But we have a couple of things that also point to other directions for Arlequino. One of those being her name. She is the trickster. Her archetype is to fool people. She is really only playing her own game, and 
it doesn't really matter which direction the other players go if it doesn't favor her outcome. I'm also very much interested on what her curse is. I believe that Genshin Impact and Hoyoverse as a whole loves to break the fourth wall. We've already experienced this in a couple of ways. One of the most obvious ones and probably one of the most fun ones is the PlayStation 4 where if you blow on the controller, Paimon actually interacts with you. Well, Arlequino also has this pretty sick idle animation where she can phase in and out of reality as if she knows that she's part of a collective illusion and maybe her curse is actually her programmed fate. One that she's aware of to be the one that brings on the chaos. The trickster that is never on one side or the other and instead gets to float in the middle. Other notable things are of course her wings, the one wing, which means you know it's that one angel or one devil. You can see it both ways, the one horn. And I do want to give a quick shout out to her weapons, the scythe, that weapon that represents death itself. Uh, it used to be what the ancient Egyptians used to use to uh, reap the fields. So it's the you know death of the old with the coming of the new. Uh, very appropriate. And now, in this video game, we get a spear that turns into a scythe. <laughs> and of course, this is Hoyover, so they are gonna fuse a couple of different things together, and I wanna just rapid fire those things at you real quick. One of them is gonna be Beauty and the Beast. You can see some of this inspiration in the character names, in the new region, uh, in the overall fairy tale aesthetic that they took with this update where the beauty has to face the beast in order to create a new kind of harmony. And the fairy tales of the beauty and the beast originated from the 1750s. And the thing to take note of of the 1750s is that they were a time of incredible enlightened philosophy, of innovations in literature, art, and architecture, in political revolutions, and in music. Through those revolutions, a new world was born out of the cinders of the old world. And that's what Arlecchino stands for, which I find fascinating considering the current times that we live in. I dream of a day that we can move past that primitive, primordial versions of ourselves. And I hope that stories like this can inspire people to look within themselves to prevent those futures to hopefully move towards a place of grace and loving our family and seeing that family beyond just our nuclear family seeing that family as the whole world if that wasn't enough fusion for you we also have some other visual motifs in our character design we can see the clear references to yin yang in the black and white as well as angels and demons through what seems like winged bangs and the horns that appear when she becomes a boss. And on top of that, we also have the infusion of flamenco into her outfit. We see in the ruffled sleeves and her snapping and in some of the preciseness of her movements. And to add to the mystery, flamenco is something that was yet another fusion, another breaking of a convention by creating new music introduced by the Romani people into the Spanish lands that were very much used to Catholic traditional organs. It was a new twist to a very conventional world and norm. And then the cherry on top that tops it all off is the final fusion of the masculine and the feminine. Clearly her transmutation into the father, the cold and unfeeling father, is what transforms her and prepares her for the next stage, and also what prepares her children for what's to come. So all of these things put together obviously sum up the overall story that we've had in Fontaine so far. I love the amount of complexity that they're adding to these characters and how much more nuanced it feels like they're getting. Uh, as we get to the climax, it's really hard to tell, you know, who's good, who's bad, what's good, what's bad. Are the gods bad? Are the archons bad? Are the dragons bad? I'm starting to get my hunches, but I think that's a video for another day. If you enjoyed today's video, please do leave a like, leave your comments with your thoughts. I would love to hear your perspective, uh, and I would love to also have you join for next time. So thank you for your time, and we will see you then.